Imagine a castle that has a number of rooms in a single line. These rooms belong to a princess who comes here every night and chooses a room to sleep in. However, she has a very strange rule about how she chooses her room. The rule is that whatever room she's in on any given night, for example this one right here, she must move to an adjacent room for the following night. And she has to move. She cannot stay in the same room two nights in a row. Other than this rule, the princess does as she pleases. She may follow any pattern she likes, revisit a room as many times as she likes, as long as she keeps moving to an adjacent room. One day, a prince visits the castle for a number of days. For some reason, the prince really wants to visit the princess in her room during the night but he has no idea which room the princess is in or was. She will not tell him. And there is no way for him to find out. She doesn't leave a trace, and he cannot spy on her. However, the princess does tell him about her rules of movement, and she allows him to visit one and only one room per night. If it's empty, that's too bad. He will just have to try again the following night. Although, unlike the princess, the prince can visit any room that he likes. It doesn't have to be adjacent to the one he tried the previous night. It can even be the same room two nights in a row. Now the puzzle is that given there are n rooms, can you find a strategy that guarantees the prince will eventually find the princess? If so, what is the least number of nights the prince needs? If you'd like to give the solution a shot, now would be a good time to pause the video. Before we go into a general solution, let's look at the simplest cases. Since the princess must be able to move, the smallest possible n is 2. This is pretty straightforward. The prince just has to pick a room and stick to it. If the princess is not in that room on the first night, she is guaranteed to move there for the second night. With n equals 3, the strategy is similar. Just pick the middle room and stick to it, and no matter which other room the princess might be in, she is guaranteed to move to the middle room by the second night. With four rooms, it suddenly gets a bit interesting. Now the prince cannot just stay put, because then the princess will always have some space to move around in. But if you try to move the prince, notice that it is not so straightforward to trap the princess. For instance, the princess may already be next to the prince and decide to move to the room that he left behind. With five rooms, it seems even more complicated because the princess has so much more space to move around in. Let's first try to understand the movements of the princess. Trying to do this on a single line can be tricky. Of course, if you looked at it this way for long enough, I'm sure you would eventually see the patterns that would help you solve the problem. But here I want to show you a different way of visualizing the same problem that makes those patterns much easier to spot. In fact, finding the right perspective on any difficult problem can often make it much easier to solve. So for this puzzle, Instead of moving around the princess on a 1D line, let's just make one row for each night. So this row can be night number one. Then we add a second row for the second night, another for night number three, and so on. This creates a 2D grid of space and time representing all possible rooms on all possible nights. And this makes it much easier to spot the patterns. Now we know that the princess has to move to any adjacent room for the next night. On this grid, this means that on night number two, she can only be on one of these two rooms. We immediately start seeing a pattern. She can only move diagonally forwards in time. In fact, we can very easily see the next night's possibilities and the night after that. Because she can only move diagonally, she can only visit some of the squares on this grid, and this makes it look a bit like a chessboard. 
In fact, using a chessboard like pattern is exactly what we need to understand the princess's movements. The thing about this design is that if you move diagonally on this board, you always stay on the same color. If you start from a dark square, you stay on a dark square. If you start from a light square, you always stay on a light square. So if the princess starts on any of these three dark squares on her first night, we know she must be on dark squares for all future times. Similarly, if she starts on a light square, she will always be on a light square. So now that we are aware of all these patterns, we can finally think about what the prince can do. The critical question to ask is, is there any choice that eliminates a future room? Applying the fact that the princess can only move diagonally, we see that for the three rooms in the middle, the princess has two ways of moving there from the previous night. So it is impossible for the prince to eliminate any of these rooms because he can only visit one room per night, not two. However, for the rooms on the side, there is only one square from which the princess can get there. So to make any kind of progress, the prince should choose one of the two rooms adjacent to the sides so that he can eliminate one of the side rooms on night number two. So let's put the prince in the second room on night number one, eliminating the first room on night number two. On the second day, the prince could again go with the second room, but that would only eliminate the same room again, making no progress and wasting a night. But notice if he moves to the third square on the second night, he eliminates one of the middle rooms. One way into it is blocked by the room that he already eliminated, and the other is blocked by the prince himself. But it doesn't end there. The new square he eliminated also eliminates another square on the fourth night. This fact would have been a bit difficult to imagine if we only looked at this problem from a one-dimensional perspective. But on this two-dimensional grid, it's quite easy to see. You can also see quite easily for yourself that all other choices on the second night would either make no progress at all or completely undo any progress made so far. If he goes like this into the third day, then something very interesting happens. He has eliminated all squares of the light colors on the fourth night. So if the prince has not found the princess by now, this means that she must be on one of these dark squares. And we know this means that she can only be on dark squares from now on. Essentially, the prince has eliminated all light squares until the end of time. In fact, the prince could take a break at this point and come back in a week, a month, or even a year. As long as he keeps track of the number of days, he will always know that on an odd night, he can eliminate two rooms, and on even nights, he can eliminate three. This is definitely one of those eureka moments when you realize that you are close to the solution, even if you don't see it just yet. So how does the prince solve the problem completely? We saw that the prince should start on either the second or second last square and move diagonally until he is one room away from the other side. This eliminates all squares of the color he started with, which is light squares in this case. So to eliminate the dark squares, he just has to follow the same pattern, but has to start on a dark square that is one room away from the side. Right before his final move, you will notice that only one square remains uneliminated on the sixth night. So if the prince has not encountered the princess by now, he is guaranteed that she is in that room on the sixth night. So he moves there, proving that he is worthy. Although what became of the prince when he entered the room remains a mystery to this day. Anyway, the prince could have also solved this another way which is to start on the dark square on the opposite side and then just move diagonally from there until the sixth night. We can apply the same strategy for a grid of any size. So to end with, here is an 8x8 grid with an animated solution.
or how many nights that would take, I will leave that for you to figure out on your own. It should be fairly straightforward now that you have this simple visualization in mind. I would like to end this video with a few thoughts on how this puzzle can be extended and more interesting math can be explored. One way of thinking about the original puzzle is that the castle is a linear graph with nodes representing the rooms. A natural extension is to consider other types of graphs and what the strategy, if any, would be for these. There is a discussion on some of these by Christian Perfect on checkmyworking.com, which also features an interactive castle to play around with. If you are interested, there is a link in the description to this site. In a future video, I will talk about an extension of this puzzle as it does get pretty interesting.